Hey Acers, I hope the audio is coming through clear on this because this is like the fifth or sixth attempt I've had at making this video. And I'm a couple weeks behind for you guys, so I'm just going to catch you guys up on where I've been in my gaming and how things have been going. And let you know that we finally got our house listed, so I'm hoping that I can be a little more regular on these videos as I, as I get going and move forward in um, getting our new housing arrangement established. As you can see, the room's a little bit empty. And yeah, this stupid microphone is part of the reason why I'm having to have them send me another one because it could be an interaction with my, my, with my cell phone software or something. But I tell you, it, it is. It was hard. I, I made six different video clips and found out that it seems like YouTube doesn't have a native video clip linker thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm still new at some of these things. I mean, I can do a lot of good things with computers. I use computers to help manage my team. I use computers to, for communication with my team. I use computers to write my stories and write my game adventure sets and stuff. And the, the modules and the, and the adventures and the settings that I'm going to be writing, which I have two of those to tell you about in a little bit. But the rotten thing is, I don't know a lot of things about video editing. And some people who know stuff about video editing are even better at it than I am. But I am learning. I, have, I, I do have a software on my computer here that will help me link it. And it's all HD and everything if I bring it in for my camera. But this camera is only SD. So I'm hoping that the audio is coming through clear. I'm hoping that you guys have been enjoying and maybe I've been prompting some ideas. So um, let me just kind of back up to two weeks ago when I, for the, la for the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the last ones of October, the 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, I ran four role-playing games, actually five role-playing games, in four days. So first was Chickens in the Mist, and that one is great. It's a, you're, you're a bunch of, you play a bunch of high school students who are going out to investigate a illegal cockfighting ring on a chicken farm in East Texas, out in the big thicket. And you guys are out there trying to Expose them so one of your classmates can get a scholarship into, um, get a scholarship to a university in journalism. But what you don't know is that, what your characters don't know is that the twin brother of the guy who's running the illegal cockfighting ring, is, he's been experimenting with, um, with poultry. And yeah, that kind of leads to some problems. But anyway, so that was Thursday morning. And the, the other thing is, is that it's not just got to be high schoolers. I like the high schoolers aspect. I, it gives a good, maybe whoever survives chickens in the mist can go on to East Texas University. But, um, but what you have is the, the adventure itself says that you just need to have like reasons to be out there. And that's one of my GM tips is that you need to have a reason for your players, characters, to be there and on site. So, that's and that's sometimes something you can pull from the characters' backgrounds, or you can pull from other places. Like, um, there's been times where I've made a character that was the kind of character I was interested in playing in that setting, and I thought it would be interesting. However, then I was taken out of that environment where my character could at least be competent and put into an environment where I'm going to be <sighs> next to useless. So yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how that goes. So anyway, that was Thursday morning. So Thursday evening, my friend was supposed to run a deadlines game, but he just wasn't feeling up to it. And just he and his son showed up. So I had just gotten uh, a couple weeks before I just gotten my, and you guys saw the unboxing for my um, superhero companion. And that came with those, those archetypes. So what I did is I took the Moscow connection, which I hadn't read all the way, but 
I gave them the archetype cards said, pick a power level two character. Those are street level superheroes. And I, while they were looking through the cards and reading the backs and everything, I quickly scanned and read through the Moscow connection. Now that's supposed to be done just with normal people and things like that. But with a pair of superheroes and putting them up against the same kind of, the same kind of odds that you are up against when you're in a five person group, then that actually kind of balanced it out. And I actually smoked one of the superheroes out of the gate and he, they ended up having to pull in another superhero just to be able to finish the part of the story they played. And it worked really well. So that's, that's an example of where you can take an, a pre-written adventure and modify it with characters that it wasn't intended for and make it still a fun time. So the, the next part was, uh, so that's Thursday and Friday. Um, I, excuse me, Friday, I ran my own setting, um, Deadline, uh, Dark Days of Neverland. Only had three people sign up and only two of them showed up. And partway through that game session, one of them had to leave. So I was just down to one. And the guy who was left, he was really cool. Really enjoyed chatting him up. And I'm hoping to be in touch with him a little bit more in the future because we are doing, um, we are doing, um, or he, he's, he's from East Texas, actually. He, and so he actually knew a lot about the big thicket and was able to tell me some stuff about the area down there and have the humidity and things like that. And so I've gotten a lot of it right. And he just helped me correct a few more things. So um, that, was, that was Friday. And Saturday evening, I ran um, Moon at the Edge of Oblivion, which... I had some pacing issues with that, and that was my fault. I need to practice running it a little bit more, and I think it could become one of my more favorite adventures that I could run. And, I mean, I admit, I'm pretty good at running one-shots, and that's kind of where I put my focus and attention. I've not really run a campaign since that initial Deadlands Noir campaign, and even that kind of fizzled. I couldn't quite keep the momentum up, so I've got to... I've got to work at my pacing. And that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be the perfect GM at all of this. But the reason why I would hope you would listen to me and take some of my advice is maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes that I've made. Then on Sunday afternoon, I ran Harvey's Heroes. And Harvey's Heroes was a blast. That one, I do, I do have it paced right. That one, it, it's, oh gosh, it has... I've run it, what, Let's see, I ran it for Fanex 2021, Fanex 2022. Um, I've run it for the teens. I haven't run it for the grown-ups yet. I tried to run it this month. I mean, that, that's part of the, the irregular ace report is that, yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my attempts at getting grown-ups to come play Savage Worlds at Mythos have not been doing so hot. It just kind of fizzled twice now, once in September and once here in October. Yeah, September and October. Or no, it was October, or August and October. That, those were my fizzles. And apparently the first one was because of parent-teacher conference and the second one was because of something else. But, you know, or this last one, I don't know what happened. I had, but and then again, it was also early in the month of November and holiday months are notoriously hard to game. My D&D group, we haven't been back together since August. So we missed September. We missed October. We, we might have gotten September. I don't think we did, though. But we did miss October. And we did... We have missed our November date. And that just, just that should have been yesterday. So anyway... Um, so we have... We have our um, Harvey's Heroes, though. It was amazing. And in my Moon at the Edge of Oblivion campaign, or not campaign, but um, evening, I had my new friend Reese was in there, and he's going he's gonna to help me out. So shout out to you, Reese. Yeah, you're, you're awesome, dude. And he's, he's going to help me with Dark Days of Neverland because he and my other, one of my other new friends, um, Carl, I'll just call him Carl, um, 
and a shout out to you as well, Carl, um, have expressed interest in helping me to bring this to fruition. And then there was Harvey's Heroes. For one thing, I'm hoping, um, as I'm getting better with my video editing and stuff, that I can do an episode, a full episode of the Irregular Report on Harvey's Heroes. Because my daughter, Clara, who is, she's my, she's my gaming buddy. And my son games with me too. He's my gaming buddy as well. But Clara, she's awesome. She's my teen GM. So I get to take her GMing every Tuesday. And um, she, um, she ended up drawing the artwork for Harvey's Heroes. And my friends that played with me on that Sunday were looking at Harvey's char- the Harvey's Heroes characters going, this is, she's just 16. One of them said, has she applied to Cal Arts? And I, I don't care if she goes to Cal Arts or not. I, I want her to be happy. But if she gets to a point where she'd like to apply to Cal Arts, I will support that. Because yes, even though I don't agree with the politics of California, that's immaterial to the fact that she could get an incredible education and build ties to some of the major animation studios of the world from Cal Arts. And she is that good. She could, I mean, I, like I said, I don't care where she goes. I don't care if she stays home. I don't care if she goes away. I, I want her to be happy. And that's also my hope for all of you. I want you to be happy and to be able to do something that you love and tell stories that become things that you love. Because there are things that you do in a role-playing game that you can't do anywhere else. And the only kind of camaraderie I can think of that comes even close to that of a role-playing game, and even goes further, is that of soldiers who've been in foxholes together or in combat together, where they have shared experiences of pain and suffering, and they grow tighter together as a a group. So that's, again, a benefit of role-playing, is the, the camaraderie. I will tell you that some of the hardest times of my life have been made better because I had a, one of my gaming buddies. And, I mean, my, my Lehigh gaming group, we lost our friend Tobin when he was just 18. And I was back off my mission by that point. And I was there as one of the pallbearers to help carry his coffin as we put him to rest. And then in, um, let's see, it was 26 at the time. Um, let's see. I think we were, oh, so like 2004, um, we lost another friend from that same group, Ryan Ferber. And Ryan, he had, he'd gotten really sick when he was a teenager. I guess a virus got into his heart, made it weak. He was playing racquetball and suddenly stopped and said, he was on his mission. He was serving his mission. He suddenly stopped though and looked at his companion and said, I don't feel so good. And he dropped right there. Heart attack and stroke. And I miss him. I really do miss him. He was one of, he was the heart of our group. Because there's, there's a reason why the five man band trope exists. The heart is really the person who kind of holds you all together. In a lot of ways, after Ferb died, we kind of went our separate ways. Some of us are still in contact with each other, and we still have a deep love for each other. I mean, Jeremy, I give you a shout out. You are still truly my brother, and our wives are sisters that they didn't know they had, <laughs> and they're awesome. You know, and, and I find I found other. Um, uh, sorry, my stupid dog's going off upstairs. Anyway, I found other people who also have become siblings that I want to have in my life, that they are close enough that I would consider them siblings. And John, you know, I'm talking about you. And then there's also Peter. And it's just, it's, that's one of the things I love about role-playing gaming is that I get to have my own imaginary version of whatever story is going on. And it's really cool in my head. But you get to have your version. And we together have a version 
And those stories that we share together bring us closer together and make us tighter as friends and as the family that we really need. We're, bro we're born to relatives. We choose our families. And I'm always glad to find new brothers and sisters that I didn't know I had. I mean, ultimately, we're all brothers and sisters, and so I'll just take that as well. But there are those that are brothers and sisters of my heart, and I will always love you. So that wraps up Halloween and the amazing work my daughter does on things like that. Anyway, um, I'm just realizing that box. No, it's not. Okay, good. <laughs> Anyway, so the next week, um, which was kind of last week, um, I ended up um, kind of running some stuff on a Tuesday. And sometimes I get grown-ups there, sometimes I don't. And I actually, I actually ran a really cool one-shot, or started a one-shot, and, and liberally stole from Altered Carbon. And... Did my own version of it though because, um, because I like that version better. I like my version better. The, one of the things I don't like about Altered Carbon or even the movie version of it is just over the top sexuality. This is my opinion, and so it's my opinion only. Sex is not needed in role playing games, you'll get there eventually. But that's something you talk with your parents about. It's not something that you bring to the gaming table. And so that is probably something that I will be pill pilloried a little bit or you know made fun of or or um it it's something that really again, this is the most I'll mention it ever. We're there at the table to tell a story. We're there at the table to build camaraderie. We're there at the table to find our commonalities. We need to stop letting grown-up topics ruin our fun. So that is why one of the Ace Role-Playing Game Club rules is grown-up topics are left at the door. You walk in that door at Mythos, or you walk in that door at your Boys and Girls Club or your church group or wherever, even if you are concerned about grown-up topics, and even if they've been coming up in school or even if they've been coming up at home, we there are people who will be made uncomfortable in either direction. Don't bring up grown-up topics. We love you for who you are. You don't need to bring up grown-up topics to try and be loved more. So please, leave the grown-up topics at the door. So, that said, um, I just actually got to do my final bit of gaming in the last little bit today. Because like I said, my D&D group, we weren't able to meet yesterday. But today, I got to play in Big Apple Sewer Samurai which is not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and eventually, speaking of not things, I'm going to get the not a role-playing game, the Monty Python fantasy game. And that's going to be a blast. But I was all out of Kickstarter money, so couldn't quite support that one. And I'm going to make sure that I am... that I am supporting things as I can. But most of my support money I do save for Pinnacle. And they're not my sponsor. But I do like the systems and things that they put out. And another new friend of mine, and I, I give a shout out to you, Scott. He made a very valid point. Pinnacle's got a lot of great X with horror games. As a matter of fact, they just kickstarted and, and finished the Kickstarter on the horror companion. Yeah! And it, it went over like gangbusters. They got all the stretch goals and all that kind of stuff. And it's paired with Pine Box Middle School. So you can get both of them shipped at the same time. And I, I went ahead and bought it at that level. Because Pine Box Middle School, hey, you know, Pine Box Texas, hey, 
East Texas University, that whole world. It's great. But I only have so much money that I can play with during the year. And I, and I got to try and respect that because it's for my family too. And they're, my family's first. My wife is first, my children, and my family situation is first. So if that means that sometimes I can't contribute on a Kickstarter, that's okay. And anyway, so I got to play Big Apple Sewer Samurai, which is a kick in the pants. Yes, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but just with the serial numbers filed off. Just like Slipstream was Flash Gordon with the serial numbers filed off until they got permission to do that. And with Riffs already have and Kevin Symbiata and um, the folks at Palladium already having a relationship with, um, with Pinnacle, maybe we could see four Big Apple Sewer Samurai, an official Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles supplement. Something like that. I don't know. We'll just see what happens. I, I know. For that matter, I think Big Apple is actually a fan, or not a fan, but a, an ace supplement. So, but that's okay. Anyway, that's the gaming I've been doing, and I th thoroughly have had a blast today doing Big Apple Sewer Samurai. I'm playing a pilot, you know, aviation shades, just a mustache. You know, so, you know, kind of picture me without my beard. And, yeah. But kind of like that. And with aviation shades on. And, you know, kind of like the guy on the Sabotage video by BC Boys. But again, check with your parents before you watch that one. There's some bad words in there. Bad words for teens to be using, I should say. Just, But remember this, you'll hear them around. You will. But just because somebody says it doesn't mean you have to. You can always be one step better. I'm trying to stop saying it myself. It's really hard after you been doing it a whole lifetime. So that's kind of my irregular gaming report. And I've had some GM advice sprinkled in here along the way. And I'm going to try and actually get another video recorded this week. So that way I can be editing it and actually post it um, next week and start getting a little bit ahead on my videos. So maybe I can not miss you guys again because I do miss you when I miss you. Yeah parse that one out but you guys are you guys are awesome i love each of you even those that even those that have in the past broken rules and not been able to game with us for a while i love you i want you to know you are loved and that you can be amazing so go game for good follow the rules as best you can and help increase the fun of everybody else at the table. Till next time, my acers, my irregulars, you guys are awesome, and I'm glad to have you with me. Thanks for coming along on the ride.